Depleted uranium, also known as Q-metal, D38, and DU, is a toxic and radioactive byproduct created in the production of enriched uranium for nuclear weapons and nuclear energy. It has a radioactive half-life of 4.4 billion years. The U.S. and NATO militaries began using bullets made of depleted uranium in 1991 in the Persian Gulf War, and they have continued using it in every major armed conflict since that time. DU is used because it is extremely dense, 1.6 times as dense as lead, which makes it ideal for piercing heavy armor. Just to give you an idea of how much this is being used, the U.S. fired 640,000 pounds of DU ammunition in the first Gulf War alone. In the initial 2003 invasion, they used an estimated 4 million pounds. When a depleted uranium shell hits its target, it explodes on impact, burning at extremely high temperatures, vaporizing into an ultra-fine aerosol with a large percentage of the particles as small as one-tenth of a micron in size. To put that in perspective, these are literally as small as viruses. This depleted uranium dust spreads out into the atmosphere, where it finds its way into water and food supplies, and is inhaled by both soldiers and civilians living and moving throughout the area. Studies have shown that upon inhalation, these particles are small enough to pass through the nose, through the olfactory nerves, and into the brain, where it accumulates. Depleted uranium also accumulates in the bones and teeth due to the fact that the body replaces calcium with it. Governments that use DU always like to portray it as safe by referring to how solid chunks don't emit enough radiation to be harmful from a distance. But this defense fails to account for the fact that these microscopic radioactive particles, once absorbed into tissues, are in direct contact with cells throughout the body. And once it's in the body, there is no way to remove it. Nor can these microscopic particles be removed from the environment at large. And remember, depleted uranium remains radioactive for over 4.4 billion years. One of the hidden tragedies of the Iraq wars has been the marked increase in birth defects, nervous system anomalies, and cancer rates. In some areas, birth defect rates have been shown to have increased by 15 times what they were before the war. It's also worth noting that after the Gulf War, thousands of soldiers became chronically ill and have never recovered. This condition is officially called Gulf War Syndrome. The U.S. government denies that this illness has any connection with the EU, even though soldiers far from the front lines have been found to have large quantities of these radioactive particles in their system. Now, given these facts, you would think that countries that claim to care about human rights would condemn the use of depleted uranium weaponry. However, there have been multiple attempts to impose a moratorium on its use over the years, but France, Britain, the U.S., and Israel have consistently blocked such proposals. The next time you hear one of these governments or the mainstream media of one of these countries talking about chemical or nuclear weapons that some country may have or be planning to build, keep that in mind. So what do you think? Agree or disagree, put your two cents in the comments or call in to discuss it live on our Monday and Wednesday night roundtable at 10 p.m. Eastern. Also, be sure to let us know in the comments if there's a topic you want us to cover. For more content like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, visit our website stormcloudsgathering.com for bonus materials, and be sure to subscribe to our weekly newsletter if you'd like to get email updates for our latest content. If you agree with the message in these videos, please favorite them, rate them, share them with your friends, help us get it out there to more people. Before we can change the way the world is, we have to start by changing the dialogue. And introducing people to these concepts through video is just one way to start.